Uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, you know the game changes uh, with five o'clock Friday afternoon and coming back quick. Obviously, it's a busy Saturday here in Madison and in other areas involving our sports teams. So getting an opportunity to uh, you know play Friday at five and then uh, get up, have a little pregame meal, and, and go at it again at noon. So. Uh, as I said in my first press conference, uh, you know, with the team we have, uh, you're looking for things to try to make improvements on. And so uh, the big thing from this past weekend with our games against Northeastern and BU was obviously we lost our first game. And I think from a coaching standpoint, uh, how we are going to respond coming back on short rest uh, Saturday playing against BU and, uh, you know, some of the things that we did Saturday against Boston University uh, are encouraging, uh, are helpful, and certainly uh, playing two opponents uh, that we played this past weekend uh, will make us a better team as we pre prepare for Duluth this weekend and get back into league competition over the next couple weekends before we break for uh, finals. What kinds of things were encouraging uh, on Saturday then that you saw uh, after a Friday's game? Well, it's <laughs> our business is so interesting. You put together scouting reports and you show videos and uh, what teams may do and their tendencies and, you know, players that you need to be aware of. And we did that with Boston University Saturday morning. And uh, you could throw that right out the window because the players we talked about, uh, it was one nothing about 15 seconds into the opening face-off. So I'm thinking to myself, well, that was a good scouting report. Uh, but again, uh, you know, down one nothing early, you know, how are you going to respond? And, uh, you know, we played, uh, you know, the rest of that period quite strong, got ourselves a couple opportunities and, uh, and then moved through that uh, to end up, uh, you know, beating a, a, a pretty good Boston University team. So, again, you're looking for some things, uh, you know, whether it's puck possession, whether it's some of the things that maybe we didn't do well against Northeastern over the 60 minutes, uh, you know, are we going to be able to continue that process uh, in Saturday's game against Boston University. And so, uh, you know, in your goaltender, too, first game that she's lost here, how's she going to respond? And especially in the first period against BU, you know, giving up a goal so early, you know, you, you look for, you know, body language, you look for things that, you know, how's she doing? And, you know, she was able to play a strong game for us and, uh, you know, got the win. From your experience, how do you spark a power play that isn't, Necessarily hitting on all cylinders. Is there anything you can uh, you can turn to? Well, you look into your power play bag and, and try to take some things out of it and try to I think really simplify some things. Uh, you know, so you know our power play with five seconds to go in Boston University game wasn't very good. But again, you look at the percentages and it might be twink because. Uh, at times, you want your power play to create opportunities, and you want it hopefully to score you a goal. And you know, if you're up two to one and you get a power play opportunity, that's a great time to score a goal to make it three one, or if you're at three one to make it four one, or if you're down a goal. Uh, and so, you know, the power play against Northeastern, we had a, a probably a 40 or 50 second five on three, create a lot of opportunities, hit the post, missed a couple up or uh, uh, empty nets. Uh, and so you, you, you'll break it down. You, you'll show video to, to players uh, that are on the power play. And again, probably if the puck's not going in, the, the next step is are we creating opportunities? And if you're creating opportunities, that's a good sign because eventually the puck's going to go in. And over the course of our 34-game regular season, some nights the puck's going to bounce for you, and other nights it's not. Uh, if you watch your game against Northeastern, you know, we didn't get many bounces. They got a couple bounces. Uh, and the game ends up three to two. And so you look at things, uh, but you know, if you're going to get better, uh, one of the areas you have to become stronger in is your special teams. If you can play strong five on five, create some opportunities, maybe score some goals. Uh, and then you beat the other team in the special situations of the power play and the penalty kill, chances are you're going to win that game. And so we have to look at some things and hopefully over the next three or four days, uh, hone some things in and try to create some more opportunities on that power play. mentioned prior to the season you're going to be relying a lot on your young players and specifically the freshman class how have, how have the freshmen come along because they're in the midst of you know a lot of school work and what have you and it gets to be a grind after a while how's this freshman class coming along i think overall uh you know you look at the, the group as an entirety uh they've done well and i say that uh you know some have played more than others some have had more minutes than others but overall you know, we get to see them in practice every day. And where they're at right now is, uh, 
is in a pretty good position. Uh, the hard part, as you mentioned, is now they're going to be dealing with you know the school part of it in regards to getting ready for finals. Uh, we normally don't play 22 games in the first half of our season. Uh, you know, we're going into game you know 20 and 20, you know 19 and 20, and then 21 and 22 up at St. Cloud. So it's a lot of hockey. You throw the travel in there. Uh, it, it can be demanding. So you know, a couple weekends ago we had a break, and I think that helped. Obviously, the long trip out to D.C. and then coming back and, you know, playing at 5 and noon is going to be a little bit of change of pace. But uh, I think they're in a good place, and I say that just because of the things that we see in practice and some of the things that we've seen in games uh, recently. Dulles has been on a pretty good run lately. A uh, couple good wins last weekend for them in a tournament. Um, is, is that a team... I mean, you, you can't take any team from you know, anywhere, anywhere in the country lightly, but th that seems like a team that can really challenge opponents in a lot of ways. Yeah, they, you know, similar to, you know, you look at Minnesota, you looked at us, uh, you, lo you looked at Duluth, those three teams lost the bulk of their scoring from last year's squad that, uh, you know, all three teams had good years. And so early on in the season, you know, you're trying to identify and trying to get kids uh, that are young to, you know, maybe score some goals from you. And then, you know, they they got off to a slow start, but you know, they found their rhythm now. And over the last month and a half, they've played well. You know, some of the young players, they've got two freshmen that are leading them in scoring. Uh, so certainly their confidence is up. And you know, coming off a couple wins out at the tournament this past weekend in Vermont, uh, they're going to come in here, you know, fired up, excited, and you know. And similar to Northeastern, after they beat us Friday night, uh, you know, they celebrated like, you know, they won the Stanley Cup or won the NCAA championship. That's how excited teams get to, to play against us. So it'll be a good test for us. Getting back home for, for our group, uh, I think, is going to be a big positive.